Hi everybody, it's Emily and I'm here to talk to you about some strategies for doing research for your career papers that you'll be doing in this class. So um, first, before we get started, I want to talk to you about the goals that I have for you for this short video and for um, thinking about research. First, I want you to gain a strategy to find resources for your paper. And then I'd also like for you to begin assessing the credibility of online information sources that you're finding. And as a reminder, at any point that you're doing research for this class or any other, the library and librarians like myself are ready and happy and able to help you. So um, on this screenshot, you'll see ways that you can get a hold of us. We do have 24-7 chat service. Um, there's also an email web form. You can text us. You can call the desk. You can look at our library DIY, which is a point of need flowchart for you to get answers to some questions. So let's dive in to talk about your career paper. One of the things to remember about your career paper is that the information about careers and jobs is not going to be in peer-reviewed articles. It's not going to be on scholarly sources. It's a very different kind of research. It's going to require you to think. It's going to require you to do research. And you're probably going to start with Google being DuckDuckGo or your favorite search engine. Another place that you might consider looking are professional association websites or accrediting body websites. So a good tip to keep in mind. But before you dive into your research, let's think about the credibility of websites. Namely, the question, are websites credible? Well, if you're like me, you might have answered, it depends, right? It depends on context. It depends on how a website's going to be used. It depends on who the authority is, right? Um, all sorts of things. Let's, let's talk about some examples. My first example is from biggoose.org. Now, um, you might go there right now, pull up a separate browser and look at it, take a poke around and see what you think. There are a few things going for it. One, it looks like that very, th that website that we're used to, Wikipedia, right? It looks like Wikipedia. The other thing is that it ends in a .org uh, domain name, right? So these are things that I hear a lot, but when in actuality, if you look closer at this website, it's satire. It's a joke. <coughs> it's also a piece of art. My friend B is an artist and he created this website. If you look closer, you think you see that the big goose has a scientific name. Um, it is the name given to a terrifying winged goose-like creature that some believe exists, right, in the Pacific Northwest. It has a, a wingspan or its, its height is a range between 10 to, 10 to 30 feet. Well, obviously, um, that's not really true, right? It's a joke. Now, if I were to use this website as a, as a citation or a reference, um, it might actually be appropriate. The kind of paper it would be appropriate in is a paper that would be talking about satirical websites or artists or artists that do performance art on the web, right? But it's not something that you would use to substantiate the existence of a big goose that lives in the Pacific Northwest. Let's look at a more health-related example. This screenshot here is from the Corn Refiners Association. The Corn Refiners Association um, is a lobbying organization or an organization that supports um, farner, farmers and those that um, are in the market of creating and, dis and um, distributing and using high fructose corn syrup. You'll notice that it has some key points about high fructose corn syrup on its website, but you want to take a closer look at those. None of those key points are pointing you to direct um, citations or references. You'll also notice that it seems like, and you would need to do further research to substantiate this, but it seems like all of the information has been cherry-picked. That means that they're not providing the entire big picture of um, the evidence that supports the use of high fructose corn syrup in foods. Now, you could definitely cite or quote this website if you're using it as a reference, but you might want to use it in the context of information that comes from one side of the story. It is not giving you all of the evidence. If you were sh doing a pro-con, you could say the Corn Refiners Association says this, and on the other hand, this other organization or this other evidence says this. 
context is where it's at. So let's move on to our next uh, favorite, Wikipedia. Is that credible? Well, again, it depends. Sometimes your professors say you can't use it at all. I'm not a fan of that, but it happens in your classes. How are you going to use Wikipedia? How are you going to evaluate what you find there? A lot of people will use it to look at other references, and that's a perfectly appropriate place to go. When I'm working to help students find questions to answers that I don't know anything about, I first get informed by looking at a Wikipedia page. So it has its utility. Think again about the context in which you're going to use that website. So I have some tips here for how to evaluate websites that you find when you're looking for your um, sources for your career paper, and it's called the CRAAP test. C-R-A-P. That stands for currency, reliability, authority, and purpose. Is the website current? Is it reliable? Who's responsible for it? And what is the purpose of it? Now I want to circle back to something I said about BigGoose.org that I forgot. Some people think that websites ending with a .org address are reliable. Well, it used to be the case that you needed to be a nonprofit or an organization to have that kind of uh, web address. Anymore, it is not restricted. Anybody can have a .org website. So that is not a marker of reliability. There are some resources for you to support you in doing your career paper. There is this course guide for your class aimed specifically at the paper that I made for you. On the home page, it links to the other parts of the website that you can visit. On the Evaluating Websites Guide, I'd highly encourage you to take a look at the video that shows the CRAAP test in action for a website. It'll walk you through using those questions to see if a website is reliable for you to use. On the next page, you have the Exploring Careers uh, page. It has some resources you can search. Uh, it has um, some books and ebooks that you can find. Um, the purple book, the Healthcare Careers Directory, is here in the PSU Library. If you are on campus, you may come and use it. It tells you information about um, uh, the education you need for a career in a medical setting. It will tell you the kind of salary you can expect. It's a really great resource for this paper. I also link on this page to the Bureau of Labor Statistics Occupational Outlook Handbook. It also gives you things like income, the education that you might need, the job growth in that sector, what kind of things you'd be doing at the, at the job, and more. So I'd highly encourage you to look it up. Finally, um, this page has a Cite Your Sources page. It gives you information on and places to go for tips on citing your sources for your career paper. And then also the Job Applications and Interviewing page is just really helpful, especially if you are looking, if you're close to that point of applying for jobs, um, doing interviews, and writing your resume. So to recap what we talked about, for this paper you're going to look for sources on the web. You're going to evaluate them using the CRAAP test. You're going to use the course guide and the resources there, and then you're also going to ask for help when you need it. All right, everyone. Good luck.